Hi, Andrew. Hello. It is such a pleasure <laughs> to talk to you today. I I have been a fan for a long time, and you know Wayne's World in particular was a huge part of of my growing up as a teenager. It, it left a big impression on me and my friends. Uh, I can tell you, we drove through a parking lot in a little blue car with Bohemian Rhapsody <laughs> pranked to the max. That's so, funny. <laughs> I have good. to ask you. I, I'm glad I gave you a good time then. <laughs> well, you know, from where you came to when you made that film, what was the biggest impression you, you have today on thinking back and making the film? Well, my impression is that I'm astounded that people still watch it and love it and care about it you know that's 30 years you know i mean it, it went by in a flash you know when you're when you're in hell in hollywood it goes by real fast you know <laughs> but um i'm just uh i'm just amazed that people still care about the movie and i'm so thankful for it to be honest with you and i'm thankful they're putting out this indestructible box that people could buy <laughs> and keep it forever you know the 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 most interesting thing to me is that i mean aside from blues brothers it stands as the the best and the most interesting of the mm -hmm. snl movies mm -hmm. uh you know what were the pressures on you at the time making this because obviously i know you it must have been a challenging position to be in it directing this film it was challenging because it was my first studio movie. And uh, I think the other part was the fact that everybody kept questioning whether or not a five minute skit could be, um, you know, made into a feature film. That, that was the biggest question I was getting uh, from everybody. Uh, and it was like they would... The, Everybody would ask me from the studio to the producers, to the actors, to the crew, you know, um, my mom asked. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it was everybody. And I kept saying, I, I can do this. I can do this. We can make a feature film out of this. No problem. No problem. No problem. I've got this. But I really, to be honest with you, I had no idea if I could make it work or not. And or if we could make it work, because I don't ever like to take total credit for the movie. You know, it was it was a beautiful, um, magical team effort that was um, unlike any other experience in my in my career. Honestly, it had such um, a good feeling on the set. And um, I think that's reflected in the film. And when people watch the movie there, it's almost like did they get high watching the movie? You know, it's like, yeah, life can be nice. Life can be great, you know? And uh, so I don't know. I'm just, I'm thankful I was there at the right time in the right place. You know, it feels like a perfect pandemic film to have a resurgence right now <laughs> because it, it, it's so, it's so everything happening all at once kind of feeling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. And, and uh, I think, um, People like to watch it over and over again, they tell me, because they, they find different little layered pieces that they didn't see the other time, you know. But yeah, while you're locked in the house, it's a good it's a good thing to watch. And I also am thrilled when I hear things like, um, you know, 40 year old parents saying they can't wait to show it to their 10 year old kid. You know, that's uh, that's awesome for me. That and the little rascals movie I did, they. Um, they love it. I'm a foster parent. And whenever I get a new foster kid, they don't like you, you know, they, they just want to be with their own parents. But, but, but I tell them I directed Wayne's world and the little rascals and all of a sudden I'm cool. You know, <laughs> what were Mike Myers and Dana Carvey like to channel into these roles? Like what, what was it like working with them and how much of it was kind of getting them on the right track or did they just have, everything already yeah, they, figured honestly out. honestly uh, andrew they have their characters down so well from being on saturday night live with it um that i didn't have to work on the characters you know they did that um i had i had to teach them how to hit their marks i had to teach them how to find their light you know or or play to the mic or whatever because all the technical aspects in filmmaking are different than, than TV making. Um, 
But as far as uh, knowing their characters, it was a real pleasure that they already knew them, you know? And uh, yeah. Well, coming from your background, was it, did you find it appealing with the idea that I, I understand that there was a lot of improv it, it, where you would see that it would fit? Uh, did you find that refreshing or, or compelling or did it just end up working out or what was the logic there? Well, see, the secret is that in television, um, especially a live show, you don't get to go back in and cut. OK, but in movies, as a director, I know when I've got it. I, I really instinctively know, OK, I've got this and and I don't care how many more takes the actor wants to do. I know when I get in the editing room, I can cut it the way I want it. So, you know, I kind of, you know, patronized them a little bit and said, OK, you can do some more takes. You can do some more takes. But I knew what I was going to cut. And uh and, and and it worked out, you know, I mean, I think we had a great first cut and they showed it at a uh, um, couple of different uh, test screenings. And then we're in the, in the 90s, which doesn't happen. Uh, it was a phenomenon. It was odd. It was unbelievable. <laughs> Between finishing the film and then the success afterwards, did you did it surprise you did the, the impact of the film? Did it uh, what did it make you feel once it's actually out in the world and it was getting such huge response? There's no describing how it, how it made me feel. I, I, I had experienced nothing like that in my career previously. Most of my earlier films, although people watch them today, they didn't get much of a release. Suburbia Dudes, Hollywood Vice Squad, blah, blah, you know. Um, even the decline movies didn't get much of a release. So when all of a sudden I was uh, dealing with a movie that was not only getting uh, uh, an initial good release, but it kept rolling, you know, it kept going for weeks in domestically in theaters here and Paramount, thank God, kept pr promoting it. And um sending me posters of how much money it made that weekend and stuff like that. <laughs> and then uh, when they, when they released it internationally, um, I think his name was Barry London and over in the um, um, marketing department, he said, um, don't expect this to do very well internationally because people are not going to understand, you know, swing and uh, not and uh, no way. They're not going to understand that because there's no translation, you know, into uh, Kazakhstan or whatever, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like they, they don't have that language there. And uh, so I was told, I've, I've seen one of them, that they made, that they, the marketing department made up little books so they could translate the, the, the uh, unique phrases and try to give the audience a, a meaning or a definition of, of what they were. And uh, surprisingly, the movie did extremely well internationally too. I mean, I couldn't believe it, you know? So just, I lucked out, man. That's the only thing I can say is I just was, I had a boyfriend that called me the waitress that got lucky, you know? <laughs> yeah. He was a, he was a guitar player in Cassandra's band in Wayne's world. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I gave him a gig, and when, once he said that, I, I dumped him. <laughs> <laughs> well, the last thing I want to know quickly is, what's it like including so many uh, incredible musicians in the film? I mean, Alice Cooper, to name one, I mean... Well, well, it was a pleasure working with Alice. I had worked with him on a couple of music videos before that, so we knew how to work together. Um and uh, he was in Decline too as well. I just mm -hmm. saw that. Um, but, um, you know, I started out with music videos. So, and I shot Gary Wright with uh, Dreamweaver, uh, right. the original uh, version in 1973 or four. Um, so, and then when I saw in the script, oh my gosh, we got Dreamweaver again. I was shocked. <laughs> um, yeah, there were there was a lot of synchronicity and a lot of coincidences that were, I don't know, kind of magical, you know. Mm -hmm. And and um, 
I mean, that people say, why is Wayne's World so, so well loved? Well, I don't know, except for the fact that it makes you feel good. You know, <laughs> when you watch it, you feel good. <laughs> so people watch it. Well, thank you so much for the time. It really is a pleasure. I am a well, tremendous fan. It, it is great to chat with you. Oh, thank you very much. All right.